Hey everyone, welcome back to week two, how not to end with a bang. I love that title. I, I don't know where I come up with these things, but I just, yeah, I, I think what it is, is there is this song out there about end like a bang. And I've actually heard a couple different ones. And um, yeah, I've had a friend because I used to like, yeah, like I want to end with a bang. I want to, that was like a huge, exciting thing for me. And somebody like, ask me they're like well why do you want to end with a bang like why didn't you want to end in like something that's not a bang and as a boy mom i'm thinking hmm uh you know because i'm seeing my kids run around with cars all the time and go you know everything's bang or pop or boom and i'm thinking huh that's a really good point <laughs> so that's where this whole thing came from is how not to end with a bang because we don't want that to happen in our relationships and we can own what is up to us to control what is in our control and we can offer that to other people so again if you're joining here on week two we talked about last week how to set really good expectations whether this relationship is a we talked about romantic relationships last week uh, which surprised some people <laughs> We also talked about coaching relationships or one on one client relationships, even with counseling or pastoral care relationships. We also talked about group relationships. So there's so many different things we could cover. But on this specific podcast series, we're mainly going to focus on one on one relationships, whether that's counseling, whether it's coach, whether that's romantic involved or in a group, whether you're facilitating, whether you're leading, whatever that looks like. So last week we talked about from the beginning start with expectations label them do check-ins periodically throughout the process so when the ending does come it's not a huge shock to everyone because you've been relationally attuning to each other the whole entire time today what you're going to be really focusing on that ending so whatever this looks like you know you get to the end of this group you get to the end of a course together you get to the end of a client counselor client coach relationship what do you do how does this look like this could look in so many different ways it depends on really how this is approached <laughs> it also depends on ex if expectations were set out from the beginning but i want to rewind and i want to go to the part where either the coach is coming to the client or the client is coming to the coach and like hey i'm feeling like this is coming to an end You've heard that in so many different situations. What do you do? How do you respond? Today, we're going to be talking about getting curious, regardless of which side you were on with this relationship. Getting curious, but also really focusing on what do I need in order to end well? And what does this other person need? Or what does this group really need? to end well and sometimes that question that curiosity can't be done in the moment sometimes people need time to really sit with where they're at to really pay attention to what they're feeling especially if this comes as kind of a shock to people so you may have to say hey especially if you're on a one-on-one -on -one session with a client i know this was maybe a shock especially if you're the counselor and you're the coach that's moving that has happened to me before when I've had to end relationships, clients that way because I was physically moving or leaving the area. So they didn't know. And so I told them a couple weeks out and the very first session with them, I said, hey, you know, after I told them what was going on, I said, I don't want to process all this now. If you have some questions, I would love to answer them. But what I would like you to do is really sit with this this week and bring your questions bring your concerns bring anything that you really want to make sure that we tackle together into this next session because i want to make sure that we both end well but i also want to make sure that i can refer you to that right person so again i'm paying attention to the needs my need in that relationship is to make sure that my client is well taken care of i don't want to just say see ya and just leave them flapping in the breeze <laughs> I want them, if they want to continue into a coaching, into a counseling relationship with someone, I want to make sure that I make that connection, even to the point of going into a Zoom room, going into a session with that other person 
and connecting and making the handoff. I've done that once. It was amazing, actually. And it was such a really cool handoff experience with this person. And we still talk, like all of it, the client and both me and this other coach, we talk all the time. And it was such an easy transition for this person. It was great. Another thing that's happened to me is when I'm moving and I'm leaving as a client, <laughs> this happened to me and I was leaving and I was leaving the city. And this was not going to work because it was a counseling relationship. And if you know, just an FYI, because I get this question a lot, coaches can coach outside of their state boundaries. Counselors can only counsel in the states that they're licensed to counsel in, unless it's a biblical counselor that's different, that's not mandated by the state. And so really what I encourage people is for coaching, I will send people to specific certified coaches that I've had a personal relationship with. For counselors, I make sure that they're in the area, but I also really pay attention to the license. I don't normally, this is only my practice, I don't normally refer out biblical counselors. Nothing against them. I think they're amazing. From the coaching standpoint, I have referred people out to biblical counselors for a coaching standpoint, just not for counseling. Because a lot of the counseling that I want to refer people to have to do with really deep mental health struggles that are going on. And so I make sure that I, they've got themselves into a licensed counseling relationship. We'll go ahead and tackle that on another day because I'm getting a lot of counseling versus coaching questions. That might be another series that we come up to. But I wanted to specify that you can only refer people for counseling in the state that the counselor is licensed in. They can do virtual in that state. <laughs> they can't do virtual outside of that state. I hope that makes sense. So that's one thing that I'm trying to make sure that happens, especially in a one on one relationship. I want to make sure that they have everything they need to move on to whatever that next thing may be. And I want to make sure me, especially the coach, that I've given them all the resources, everything that they need to officially move on. Did they reach their goals? <laughs> If not, what do we need to put in place together right now so that they can reach their goals? If they're ending, I want to know why they're ending. I have a right to know that they don't have to tell me, but I want to make sure that they're ending well, but also that they have time to process that in a good, healthy way. So there might be something that they need from me in that. In a group setting, this can happen in multiple ways. A, the group itself can be coming to an end, and we're going to be talking about this a little bit more next week. So hold on. I know if you're in a group and you're going, I want to know more about this, we're going to cover this in a better, bigger detail next week, and I'm going to share some of my experiences. But in a group setting, however this is coming, whether you're nearing the end of a set time frame or if it's one member or two members that because of life circumstances, they have to leave the group. You really want to focus on, okay, what does that person, the one that's leaving the group, what do they need? And sometimes they're not going to know. It's a great time to offer the questions that we talked about, how to deal with heavy emotions. We talked about that, I think it was a couple series ago. So if you don't know what that is, I don't think that one's on video. So you can go and check that out on the audio series. It's a really good series to check out. Maybe it is on video. I'm not sure. We've done a lot of podcasts now. <laughs> That's great. So you can go and look that up, how to deal with heavy emotions. But the question that we talked about asking is, how can we as a group best be with you right now? How can we help you throughout the week? Meaning, can we pray with you throughout the week? What can we pray with you right now? What would that look like? Do you want us to email the prayers to you? Do you want us to call you? Do you want us to text? Do you want us to Marco Polo? There's so many different options there. How would you like us to offer stories or advice? If that's, would you like us to offer that? Maybe there's a story of a similar situation when I felt like I had to leave a group. Or advice one time that we're allowed to offer advice and when the person feels like it's necessary. Or can we listen to Jesus with you? And that, if you haven't listened to that whole series, I encourage you to go back because it's different than prayer. And it's really, I'm not going to ruin that. So just go <laughs> listen to that series. Um, and another thing that sometimes I offer in a group setting 
is, hey, I know leaving can be hard and challenging. Would you like a coaching session to help you transition after we process this together and let you sit and be honored as a group? Would you like a coaching session with me to help you transition well as well? So that's an option. All of those are options. You're paying attention to what the person needs in order to transition well. And then as a group, which we'll talk about more next week, you process and you honor well as a group. You talk about the relationships that were formed. You talk about what that person brought into the group. You may talk about what you want to see in that person as they move forward. You talk about what they brought into your story and how they got to see their story and in through everything that they shared. So there's so many different things that are going on. But again, the whole purpose of this is not to say, okay, you're leaving. Bye. See ya. We as Americans don't always say goodbye well. And I think a lot of it has to do with our inability to stay in heavy emotions. We are so quick to fix. We are so quick to make ourselves feel comfortable. Goodbyes aren't comfortable. They're not. In fact, we even said, oh, I don't say goodbye. I just say, see you later. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's true. But that's almost a cop out because we're not allowing ourselves to really sit and process in the emotion with the other person. Have you noticed that many times when we're saying goodbye, if, if it's in a relationship, we're not processing that with anybody. <laughs> we're processing that after the fact by ourselves. So this idea of staying curious with that other person, with the group, with the client, it's so different because we don't practice it. So if it feels weird, you're doing it right. <laughs> and to bring that emotion into the room, this makes me feel afraid because I don't know how to end relationships well. This makes me feel sad because I honestly don't know what I'm going to do without you. This makes me feel angry because I don't feel like I have any control or any say out of any of this. You see what I'm talking about here? That's when you're talking about the real emotions, the real curiosity that's going on here. And once you can get those emotions out onto the table, we can finally work together and process together and know what each other needs and be able to meet those needs and confidence and compassion and curiosity. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this gives you some things to think about. And our challenge this month has been for you to really come up. Your challenge last week was to come up or ask Jesus about a situation, about a relationship. It could have been a counselor. It could have been a coach. It could be in a group. It could have been a romantic relationship. However you wanted to, where you two split ways, the group ended, the relationship ended, the friendship ended, you know, there was just an rupture of some sort and maybe it didn't end well. So my question to you last week was, did you bring expectations into that relationship from the beginning? My question to you this week is, were you able to really sit in curiosity with that person? Nine times out of 10, that's a no, because we don't know how to do it. And here's the thing, that's okay, because you didn't know how to do it. Now you do. <laughs> now you do. So a lot of times it's working with a coach, working with a counselor, working with somebody that can help you emotionally regulate when those moments come to call out the emotions, to invite the other person into curiosity. If you're going to expect that to happen in the moment without already practicing this beforehand, you're kidding yourself. That's like saying, hey, I'm going to run a marathon, but I'm not going to do any practice beforehand. That doesn't make any sense. If a relationship is ending, that's huge. That's a blow up. That's a rupture. I'm not saying you have to practice ruptures every day, but you do need to practice how to emotionally regulate, how to call out emotions that are happening in your body, how to ask curious questions with other people. And that is something that we do in our tip group. So it's a promo for that, but also to really encourage to get into deeper relationships with other people. If you don't believe that that's a real occurrence and a real reality, I want you to say, I get to experience it every single week and I would not have it any other way. They are out there. If you don't find it here and step out and thrive, please search for it elsewhere because there are groups that you can practice showing up in curiosity, practice asking curious questions, practice naming your emotions. And we want to make sure that you connect well. 
So with that being said, that's your homework for this week. I really hope that you're able to process your relationships or bring some of these tools into the relationships, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one client counselor coach, or if it's a group relationship, or it could be a relationship with your own kids. <laughs> some of you guys are beginning summer. So you are doing some ending. So right now, put the expectation right there for your kids. And then also bring the emotion to the conversation. How are you guys feeling about the summer? What do you guys want to do this summer? How can I best walk with you? Awesome conversations to have with your kids, right? All right. I can't wait to see you guys next week. If you have any questions, feel free to me, email me anytime. It's Bethany at stepoutandthrive.com or tag me on social media or find one of the social media posts. All right. Hope you guys have a great week and see you back here next week.